Oftentimes when you're with a toxic person, after a period of time, you either break free or you start getting some clarity. But the first piece is that you're typically confused. So I want to talk to you today about are you confused about being with a toxic person? Are you confused about being with a narcissist? What does that actually look like? So let's say you're here and this is part of your life of what's actually going on. There's going to be a piece of when you're in a toxic relationship, you are going to have all these question marks. You're going to have all of this confusion that's happening inside your life. Like, wait a second. Like, does he love me? Does he care? What's actually true? What's not? And part of this whole piece is the goal, is the goal that you stay confused. Now, if you stay confused, we'll use the illustration that I've done before of saying, hey, part of it is to keep you in a fog, is to keep you stuck in this fog so that you can't actually see anywhere out. If you can't see anywhere out, then you are solely dependent on the narcissist on the outside of the fog because he's creating it, telling you, hey, go this way, go this direction, whatever it might be, okay? Because when you get to this place, you will be completely lost, you'll be completely stuck. When you're confused about being with a toxic person, it's typically because of a story that's getting sold to you, like a story that's happening. And so I want you to consider what is the story that you actually believe. Now, this is where it gets a little difficult. Because sometimes people will be like, I don't think I have a story that I believe. Well, you typically have the first story that's been told to you. And the first story that's been told to you has been the lie from the narcissist to you. So you have the narcissist and he sold you a lie. He said, hey, this is who I am. Like, this is how I look. Look at me. This is the mask of me. I'm looking, I'm appearing, I'm acting a certain way. And then later, that starts to fall apart. And you start to realize, wait a second, something wasn't true. Now, initially, you have the narcissist doing these lies about himself, right? So like, here's the mask. This is who I am. Then you have it start to move and you have it start to change where you start to see the mask drop, right? And you start to see exactly who he is. At this point, then, he's typically starting to take the mask and he's typically starting to take the attributes and the things that he wants, and then he's placing it on you. And this becomes the lie that you believe. Now, the lie that you believe might be about him, but oftentimes it gets way deeper. It gets more entrenched inside of you that it's not just about him and it's not just about what he did and it's not just like looking at him. It is deeper ingrained inside of you because it has to do with you. It has to do with who you are. It has to do with why he treats you this way. And a lot of it comes back to you. Now, part of it, when it comes back to you, the lie could be based on your value, could be based on your worth, could be based on being good enough. Because oftentimes, the, the, the main lie that's going to come from the toxic person is going to be working on hitting your insecurities, your vulnerabilities, and making you feel less than. That you have to remember, like, as you're looking at this, the narcissist is looking at you and is looking at himself being like, this is a scale. Okay. He's looking at being like, here is his worth and here is your worth. Okay. And he's like, how do I actually take your worth down? How do I actually make sure that I bring it down? Well, I just tell you that you're not good enough and it starts to lower. I just tell you that you're, you're not worth it and it starts to lower. I just work on your insecurities and it starts to lower. And all of a sudden it keeps lowering and lowering and lowering to the place where the narcissist is like, see, I'm better than you. See, I look better than you. See, I'm whatever. Okay, and typically what's happening is because of all this confusion that's going on here, you're starting to believe the lie. Now, what is the lie? It's different for each person. So I can't tell you one lie because it'll absolutely go for everybody completely different. I've never met a person who has the same exact story. They're always different. But let's talk through some examples to hopefully trigger some things inside of you of like, oh, this might be what it is. Sometimes that lie, like I mentioned, goes back to your worth or goes back to your value. One of the big ones even after the relationship is you beating yourself up about what just happened. So for instance, you might be like, hey, one of the lies is if I would have changed something else about me, then 
he would have loved me. Okay? Now, you're going to see this a lot of times of thinking like, hey, if I would have done this, if I would have done this, if I would have done this, then he would have loved me. Then he would have cared about me. Now, like I said, there's always going to be a million different stories from different people. But this could be one of the lies. If I would have changed something, then he would have loved me. Now, the thing is, you could have continued to change over and over and over again, and he never would have got to that stage. Why? Because he didn't care about you to start off with. He was just trying to do this to lead you on. Okay? This is a piece you need to understand. Narcissus is going to keep doing this to lead you on. If he keeps doing this to lead you on, you keep following. The narcissist flips that in his head and he's like, oh, look at that. She loves me because she's following me. She's paying attention to me. She thinks I'm amazing. No, he's just holding the carrot and you're having to follow him because you're addicted to that. There's going to be a lie that you have in your life. The thing is, it's not just one. Hundreds, sometimes millions of different lies that have been told to you. Now, sometimes the narcissist is the one that tells them to you. Sometimes you've already learned these from childhood. You learn them from your upbringing, from your parents, of the things that they told you, of the, how they communicated, what they said, of how they made you feel. You're going to see this from religion. You're going to see this from education. You're going to see this from previous relationships, friendships, all different lies and stories that you believe over a period of time that makes you feel less than, makes you feel like you have no value, makes you feel like you have no worth. This is part of the lie that the narcissist is selling you, but then after a period of time, you start to take it on. You leave the relationship and you still have that implanted inside you because now you're perpetuating it. You're saying, well, I'm not good enough because he didn't stay. I'm not good enough because this didn't happen. If I would have done this better then, and on and on it goes. So you need to understand a lot of times people are looking at this and they're not understanding that they're believing a lie, a false reality about themselves, about the narcissist and about the relationship. Oftentimes people will do this as they look back on the relationship. They will look back and they will remember a good moment, a good point, and be like, oh, this was amazing. But they'll ignore everything else. Have you ever had that happen? Sometimes what you'll see is inside of this, you'll see people that will look at a certain period of time. So I normally do this illustration like this. Let's say you're here and you're looking back at the past. And as you look back at the past, what you see, we'll do it as a little mountain range here. You see this right here. Now you see this moment at the peak of this mountain that was a good date. And you see this moment at the peak of the mountain here that was a fun, well, it's not really vacation because you don't really have fun vacations, narcissists. All right, fun times, okay? So you look at these two points and you're like, hey, this looks really cool. This looks a really amazing. Like I remember this, like it wasn't that bad. But the problem is you're ignoring, if you look at this here, you're ignoring everything else in between. This is what happens inside of the toxic relationship. You will get trained to only look at what you can look at, to only look at the good stuff, to ignore the bad. Just be like, oh, it wasn't that bad because this happened. And you will justify things. You will switch stuff around. You will start to lie to yourself thinking it's okay. It's not that big of a deal. The trauma wasn't that bad. Another lie that you'll believe. Do you believe this all in your life? When you're dealing with a toxic, narcissistic, abusive person, you're going to start getting to this place where you start viewing and seeing your current reality based on those few moments that might have felt good or might have been great. The times when he actually showed up. The times when he didn't seem as an abusive asshole. But it will typically try to confuse you to make you think that the rest of the bad times weren't actually there when they were. You just ignored them. You just minimize them now. Are you doing this? Narcissistic abuse will leave you in a confused state for a long period of time. And typically, people will not just get out of it. It doesn't just take time and they magically heal from it. It's not just consuming more knowledge and they get better from it. It's actually helping people work on rewiring the lie that they believe. Because if you don't change that, you will stay stuck mentally, emotionally, physically with the person. You will stay stuck. We see it all the time. Until you change the lie you believe, you will stay stuck. And I need you to see that and I need you to understand that. If I can help you get unstuck today, if you feel like you're in a karmic loop, this cycle going back and forth to a toxic person or to him or to toxicity in general, I want you to break free. 
You can click on the link in my bio. You can go to rawmotivations.com slash breakthrough because I want to show you how we help people break through the trauma from going from a victim to a survivor to a thriver and continue to mold and grow and develop yourself into the woman you're called to be instead of being stuck with him. Instead of being stuck with a toxic guy that's keeping you and beating you down every single day with his words or with his actions. It's time to get free, but you have to make a choice to be able to choose you. You have to make a choice to actually look at the past and say, okay, I'm actually going to look at the things that made me feel like it was amazing when it actually wasn't. Like I'm actually going to take a look at the lie that I've been believing for a period of time of how it's been affecting me, of how it's been messing with my head. Like I'm actually going to take a look at all the things that had me believe the lie that he said and how it affected my value, my worth, and made me feel like I wasn't good enough. If you're at that point today where you're actually ready to move forward in your healing process, go to rawmotivation.com slash breakthrough. If you haven't already, hit subscribe, like, rate, or review. If you're listening on the podcast, give it a share as well because we want people to understand more about narcissistic abuse, but also how you start to move forward in the healing process today.